Hello YouTube, today I'll be teaching you, well through this series I'll be teaching you how to create your own programming language or how I'm going to put it, Visual Basic Interpreter. How it works is we're going to create a simple programming language which will display a simple print command when we say the first thing you're going to want to do is download Visual Studio. You can get it for free from the Microsoft website. And you want to have to get the probably if you you're going to have to get the ultimate trial. It's the best thing to do. It's what I have and it's best that you have the same as me else you'll get a little bit lost. I'll give you time now to go install that so if, if you've already got it installed then we'll just continue. So assuming you have Visual Studio installed we're going to want to launch it of course. I'm gonna I'm gonna also assume that you've also licensed the product and you're ready to use the product. So give it some time to load once it's launched you're going to want to create a new project this will default load into my server manager .core since I was last working on that so let's give me a few minutes new project we're gonna want to create a Visual Basic Windows Form application. Now you can save this anywhere. I'll be saving it to my desktop. Tutorial. Select folder. Um, you're gonna want to name it something, so I'll name it Tutorial Language. Then we'll press OK, and we're going to create our form. So, once we're in, we're going to want to I'll wait for these DLLs to load, but then what we're going to have to do is create a well, first style how you want this to look. If you're a really, really like super newbie to Visual Basic, then I should have said this at the start, but I really don't suggest you do this um, tutorial. Look at the basics first. This is for, I would say, intermediate users or people who are just interested. Um, but anyway, change just round that off. So we've got our form here. We're gonna want to name it something. I'm gonna name mine tutorial language. You can put anything there. Um, I'm gonna change the form border style to fixed single, so you can't move it. Then we are going to want to change the max maximize box to false because we don't want the user to edit this form in any way. Um, you don't have to set an icon, I just like to set an icon. And what you're going to want to do is, you're going to want to place one button here. And you're going to want to change that text to run script. And you're going to want to change the name to run script button with capital. Then just style how this how you want it, and then what we're gonna have to do is add a list box. There, there it is. Then just place that above the button, and then style it how you want. For mine, I'll be making it black like a console, since that's basically what it is. And change the fonts to how you want it. You know. Um. I suggest going with this really nice font. There it is. This one's a really that one's a really good font. Maybe not too big though. But anyway, after we've messed up with messed around with fonts, we're gonna want to um edit the settings of this list box. Um under behavior you'll see selection mode. You you wanna change that to none. So the user cannot select anything that's in this um list box. You're also going to want to name the list box script output. This is where the commands will be well registered, I guess, and shown. Like, I guess it's like so. If we were to run this script, it would print it here too. 
it's basically what the user will see. So, once we've done that, let's name this to main, since it's our main form. We're going to want to right click, add, new folder. And we want to call this new folder, modules. If you've never used modules before, they are a really nice way of handling data in Visual Basic. So, it's basically, you can use this to um, public um, it's an easy way to public all your variables that you're going to use. Um, so name this variables. I don't think that's spelled right. <laughs> You'll have to mind my spelling, I'm sorry. Um, we'll change this to vars, since that, I can spell that. <laughs> so, first thing I want to do is public whatever you want to name your... Um, your program language, so I would go tutorial name as string, which is equal to whatever your name is, like the name of the program language, <laughs> name of programming language, and someone, I don't think that's about all we need to public right now, I actually can't remember the code off the top of my head, since it's a lot of code, um, Let's pull something from my git. Um, I'll link the, to the gits that you can use and to download a um, a program which I made earlier. Um, that works fine. We're going to go into constants. Um, you can do this if you want. You can... Let's add this. Um, tutorial name. Just put tutorial. Tut. That's what my program language is called. Um, public tutorial underscore local IP as string which is equal to that and we want to do the version so tutorial there we go so that's all we're going to need to really um well state right now in this current st well, position that we are at um so Let's actually get this working then. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Toolbox, Dialogs, Open File Dialog, and just place that in there. Um, change it to whatever you want. I'm going to name it Open File. For Filter, we are going to want to filter your program language files only, which of course you've already picked, so we're going to put tut files, then that weird little key, then tut. Dot, tut. So now it'll filter only the files that we want to read. I'll go into that more, like more that later, and we don't want to change any of that. Um, so first thing we want to do, um, we don't want to do anything when the form loads. We want to do a thing when the user presses this run scripts button. Oh, I almost forgot. You need to go to your my product settings and quickly file and make a setting called file path. You also need a setting called dummy text and make sure you s you s um, the type is string and the scope is user and dummy int and you'll need to change press this box down here and change that to integer. This will be used later which we'll need it in this point now. Okay so I'm going to not use um, subs for this. I'll just write it all in here um, so it's a little bit easier for you to understand. So, we first want to open file. Oh, I do this. So I do this every time I put the file name in there. Yeah, don't do don't do the same mistake I do. It's, it's not very good. There we go. Okay, so we first want to open file dot show dialog. This will show the files dialog. Pretty. Then we must, once it's done that, we will dim the file output as string, which is equal to open file dot selected. Um, um, file name, there we go. It's, it's for some else. Um, so then we need to go if file output is equal to nothing, then we must exit the sub 
exit so it doesn't continue with the script because there's no file there. It's normally when the user presses X and then we'll just put a little message box saying, please enter a file. And we also need to check if file output dot f um, if sorry my dot computer dot computer I hate the way it's that dot file system dot file exists. This checks if of course the file exists. Um, file output. Then we just have to add a little not here. So it's basically if it doesn't exist, then we run this um, if statement which is message box file does not exist this is strange um, then we must exit the sub exit sub someone's done that um, we then actually need to load it which is the hard part <laughs> um, so it's gone through it's gone through all the procedures so it knows it's legit so then we must go my dot settings dot file path is equal to file output then my dot settings dot save so now I've saved that to settings now we have to actually launch the check script I guess it's gonna call it the check script function so it's gonna loop for every single line and do stuff when we tell it to so I'll just have to load up my code from earlier <laughs> it's in generate code there we go so I don't think I'm gonna use a module for this. I will not use a module for this, so I'll keep it all in one file, all in the main file, so it's much easier for you to code for. So, first things first, we need to read the file that has been given to us. So, and we need to grab code file output. So, basically, we're sending this string to this this um this sub which will then dim temp which is the temporary which we're going to use to read it as um what it reads basically then it's also good practice to um trim it down we're not going to be putting it into a script box um this is for a later tutorial um it's basically if you want to edit it on the fly um which we will create an id at a later date but for now, we don't really need to do anything. Oh, I forgot one. Um, we need to create another file. I'm oh, sorry, setting called file dump. This just dumps it into the application so it can read it easier and doesn't well cause like doesn't use much memory. Um, yes. So there we go. My dot settings dot file dump is equal to temp. So now, dot settings dot save. Now that's saved into the application, which just um, frees up memory. Um, I will go into a full depth explanation on memory and how to make your programming efficient, but not right now. Um, it's also good practice to, um, if I ever find the link, because it's not even in there. Um, I'll just add it now. Create, just type in function add line text not no text then we'll just go return add line I can't remember what we call our has to be a, has to be a second I forgot what I call this script output output dot items dot add text then now we can just go add line uh, um, file loaded into into application. So this is just easy, so we don't have to talk about all that. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to check through each line. Um, we'll go sub dot check lines text. So let's get there. We go. So then we go check lines temp. Or we can just go my dot settings. I think we will use temp. We we'll use temp. Um, then just look at my code from earlier. Check lines. 
Um, oh yeah, it's also good practice to go if text equals nothing, then exit sub. This stops any um, null errors because we don't like them. Um, so first, we're going to want to do is make a quick integer to check the lines. It's just to count them. Um, this will be used for errors later. So let's put it at the top. Dim line count as integer. There we go. And it'll complain that we're not using it yet. And then what we want to do is ah, fuck. Oh sorry, I've been stupid. We do have to put this into an ID. <laughs> uh, I forgot about it. I'm so sorry. I'm such a bad teacher. Um just create a simple rich text box and just call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it bucket. And basically this is how we count every line. It's um, it's quite hard to count the lines in a string that isn't actually on the form. It's actually impossible. But don't worry about that. Um, then we'll just copy this text down for each script in bucket. So I may have typed that a little bit fast, I think. Um, basically, for each line in bucket.lines, it will dim carried lines as string, which is equal to line. Then it's if carry line is equal to nothing, then carry line equal to null. I'll explain this later when we get done to it. Then it will line count. Let's add that there. Which is equal to itself plus one. And then it will check each line. A function that we've not actually well sub that we've actually not created yet. So that's done. Now that'll check the lines and we've done that. So that's a good goal. We've already done that. So now we go sub check each line. Text 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 count lines yes I think <laughs> sorry um, I think we can just use line count here yeah we can it's a little bit tricky these I never actually got as far as I understand that you can just put anything in here but I like to put text as it's proper um, and reminds me of Java, but anyway, um, so, this is the important part, this is the main thing that will make up everything, and, yeah, so, first thing we want to do is create an exploded line string, this is for the application to use, um, when checking for each line, so, what we can do is, also we need to quickly dim, um, lines as integer, integer, no that's an interaction, <laughs> integer, I cannot spell integer, well I cannot spell anything today, as, why am I asking it again, which equal to line count, yeah my, my brain just kind of failed, um, so, and also we need to dim line list, this is, um, this is basically what we will add on to at the end, um, so we can print the like the line list. It's just mainly just a huge array. Um, so let me go. If exploded line is equal to null, which is what we class up as here, then exit sub. We don't want that to do anything. We just want it to exit because it's null. It's nothing. We don't need to read it. If it's just stop errors. So our program language will be following this format meaning that we will require the user to add one of these a semicolon I think it's called I don't actually know what one of these is called I should probably find that out um, basically they have to add one of them so that's the first thing we should check if not we should deny the user so, so if not exploded line line dot ends with oh god I can't type with, ends with this character, whatever that is, then, um, then we want to we want to tell the user that it's not ended with that. So, I'm actually thinking now. All right, I think it'd be proper practice if we added an error log onto here. So I would make this a little bit shorter and add a just quick list text box. Just you don't even have to name it. This is just so we can keep the errors over here and the script over here, else it just gets really like messy, which is what we don't want. So I'm gonna name this error log. 
not even going to change it, just right, um, I can't put spaces, error log, there we go, error log, <laughs> so it's readjusting my headset, um, um, okay, sorry about that, I'm back, I just had to check something, um, but anyway, so, we've got our error log, which is right here, he's just chilling out, and, now what was we on, oh yes, we was on this, so, if it doesn't end with one, then we'll just create a quick function here just to um just to add let's say error. Let's add an error. Um error log. So we wanna go add error error on line. Then we wanna put plus lines error on line whatever plus I think we should actually get rid of that, yeah, error on lines, lines, then we just want to go, yeah, that'd be good, then we just want to go, missing syntax, expected, this, <laughs> so missing syntax, expected a, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm just gonna google what these are, because I feel really bad, a semicolon, it's a semicolon, I knew that, and then we just want to exit sub, so it won't continue. It knows it's not got it's not got a um, semicolon, so it'll just exit. But if it has, then we need to check for things. So this is um, oh sorry, we also need to replace it. If it does contain it, we need to replace it with nothing, um, so it uh, looks okay in the um. So it looks okay in the end. So it doesn't it doesn't have that in the end. Um, basically, what we're doing here is just filtering out data to what we want. Now, I'm gonna copy and paste this the entire thing because this this is just this script is pretty damn long and it meh and it won't work. Cause it's of course so. Anyway, we just want to get rid of that. I will. I will actually um supply this code at the end, so don't worry. And I'll, I'll go through it now, Don't so you won't be on your own. Add error. Add errors. Add errors. Add errors. There we go. So, I'll go through this now, and I'll give you a little time to write it down. Um, so, we first check if the exploded line starts with print. If it does, then we remove the first five characters, zero to five. Um, this is instead of removing the actual print word, so if the user does like, um, it's gone no, well, and it just goes print, 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 um, they're not removed. And then we go, if it starts with character 41, which is one of these, the brackets, forward brackets, um, it will replace it with nothing, so it will get rid of it, because it, it knows it exists, so it will get rid of it. Else, it will put a syntax error, saying, oh wait, it, it, it actually, um, it doesn't start with this, so it's an error. Then we check if it ends with a bracket, a, um, a reverse bracket. And the same as that, if it, if it does, then it will remove it, it will just go, yeah, that exists. Um... Then we go exploded line dot starts with because we've already moved that, so we know we filled down that data. So if it starts with a comma, then it will go forward. Else, it'll give us a syntax error. Then finally, it it puts the line list, so it says line list is equal to exploded line, and then that's done. It's already filtered down, and we've got our first command. It's as simple as that. It's basically just replacing data. Um, then we can just go add line line list so we'll give this a quick run and we'll see how it goes um we'll first need to go to notepad if you ever got notepad notepad plus 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 then you can just go to notepad and just create a simple file um with the all files which is here of types so we named our files tut well i did anyway so we'll just go test.tut and then that should work Hopefully this all works, hopefully. Um, then we'll just run the script. Took, took file loaded into application. That didn't work. Hmm. 
Hmm, that's interesting. Why didn't you work then? Welcome to the fun of programming. Well, fun of programming. So, ah, let's see. I bucket is not actually. It's um, what's that right? It's script output. That's why it didn't work. Cause it was like, wait, that doesn't exist. <laughs> script output dot lines. Oh wait, what? It was happy. Oh sorry, I'm such an idiot. That does exist. <laughs> um, so why are you not working? File dump is equal to tenth. Ah, uh, I know what's going on. I didn't actually. That's awkward. Um, check lines tenth. It doesn't actually have any lines in it because I've not actually put it. I've not actually set it to print there. Uh, don't forget to do that. So we need to go. Bucket dot text is equal to temp. There we go. And also we should probably try it. Bucket dot text is equal to bucket dot um, bucket dot trim. Is it trim? Text dot trim. There we go. Dang it, that should work now. And it did. Print, print, print. So, that's the first command. There it is. And we got no errors. And then to check errors, we just run this script. Oh, sorry, we can't do that. <laughs> oh, God, I'm not doing good today. So, then just to test it, we'll just put print like that. So, we won't put any commas in. Who needs commas? <laughs> And we'll just press like that. Run script. And there we go. It gives us a missing syntax. So, that's um, part one. Um, in the next part, I'll go into this in more in depth. And I'll actually um, I'll add more commands and go through this a little bit more. Um, if you liked it and it was pretty useful to you, then, um, then subscribe. It's always needed. Um, I do more of this stuff, and, well, I've generally got more tutorials planned, but, hey, if you're enjoying yourself and you like creating stuff, then just hit that button. <laughs> but anyway, I'll, um, be sure to watch the next part, as you may, well, you may want to continue it. But anyway, bye.